from the Allen Media Worldwide Headquarters Studios high atop two Turtle Creek Tower. This is Deconstructing Dallas. Greetings, everybody. Ryan Trimble here, joining you today in a warm, roasty, toasty oven called Dallas, Texas, joined by the always cool Sean Williams. Sean, good day, sir. Hard to be cool this time of year. Not for Texas. you. Not for you. I don't know, my friend, but uh, we are going to try to make it glad that everyone has joined us for a, another outstanding episode of Deconstructing Dallas. I'm really excited. Uh, I This was a really, really, this is going to be a really fun episode, and uh, but I wanted to start off, Sean, because you know me, SMU Homer, SMU fan extraordinaire, so pumped to see... The Mustang Zone, former SMU Mustang great Shake Milton, got drafted 54th overall by the. He was actually drafted by the Mavs, who then traded the rights. Traded his it, rights. This is the confusing NBA draft. I mean, it's like ridiculous to follow. Anyway, Shake is going to the Philadelphia 76ers. That is exciting because we've had a chance because you dragged me along to SMU games from time to time, and yeah. we've, I've got to see Shake play over the last couple of years. Just a fun team. Obviously, they had injuries this year that the season did not quite go as well as it did in the previous season, but it's great to see one of our local products, and it's great to see that kind of annually that the Mustangs are putting uh, somebody on the board to get drafted in the, in the league. Yeah, we, we had we had uh, two go, two drafted last year, and then Ben Moore obviously signed in a, a, a free agency uh, to the uh, Pacers, and this year, shake, there's, shake and bake, baby. And there's a lot of worse places to be right now than Philadelphia. There's a lot of young talent A lot there. of action, a lot and of action. Once, once he gets on the roster, it's, it'll be <laughs> in a good spot. I mean, yeah. you know. Even in the playoffs, we got to see a little hometown action this year uh, from our guys, uh, the Celtics. Our guy, who's what's yeah, that guy? Semi Semi, yeah, Semi Ogilvy and Sterling really Brown good. on the on the Bucks, yep. and and now Shake. So I got to watch a lot of Eastern Conference basketball these days, I guess, Sean. Yeah, and I'll be right there with you watching the East Coast, the Eastern Conference basketball, because again, as we've mentioned, we were locked into all the playoff games this year. So uh, again, congratulations to Shake uh, and his family. That's right. Uh, for and hopefully we'll get to see him playing in the summer league coming up. Yeah, that'd be, cool. that'd be fun. Uh, r- related locally here, the Mavs got their man. They've gone in uh, big. They they traded up two spots to get their guy, the Slovenian Wonder Boy, and uh, we'll see. They've they've hit. As you know, as all of us know, they've hit on a European star before, a 19-year-old European star. So maybe this will be the start of another era. It is a very interesting team that's coming together. I think when they brought Harrison Barnes in, they wanted him to be a focal point of the team. Really good guy, by the way, Harrison Barnes, who mm-hmm. Barnes is, who, who's really kind of active in the community and, and back in his home state. But... You know, to have Dennis Smith Jr., to have Doncic, to have Yogi Ferrell, who I'm I'm not sure if they've got him back on the team yet. Shout out to his dad, Kevin Ferrell, who worked with (laughs) some last year with Dallas County Promise. Um, Yogi, you know, Wes Matthews is is a really good player, good shooter. He, I always think he's a little older than he is. Uh, he's still a, a young guy. I think he's still got quite a bit of basketball left in him. Uh, they, they, you know, obviously you, you say all those names and then you get to Dirk, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, who's gonna that be, guy. I believe, is it his 21st season? I think that's right. I and think it's his 21st uh, season. I just want to know the when Mavericks. they're putting the statue out in front of the uh, American Airlines Center for him. That'd be nice. I'd be down. I will go uh, for that. JJ, uh, who we yeah. worked with, <laughs> yeah. uh, with last season. With Ofo. With Ofo. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I think I will probably – I'm probably looking more forward to this season than I have in a while. For uh, the I Mavericks. agree. I agree. But uh, on to bigger and better things. I'm looking forward to today's episode, Sean. We are going to have the opportunity to sit down with Effie Dennison from Texas Capital Bank. Yes, Effie is pretty much doing – so much community development for Texas Capital Bank. She's doing 
community relations. She's the vice president there that's in charge of community relations and community development. And we, it, it's cool because, and we found this a couple of times now, is that Texas Capital Bank had heard our podcast and heard us talking to Peter um, Brodsky about Redbird Mall. And then they were interested because they are working with Redbird Mall. Right. Uh, as far as investment and financing and and it allowed us to have what was a wonderful conversation with Effie. That's right. Big shout out to Michelle George for coordinating today's episode. Really appreciated her uh, reaching out. So looking forward to it, Sean. You know, Texas Capital Bank, their first building, uh, 2100 McKinney, was where I first started with Chairman Branch when I was just a lowly sign guy. Did you know that? I did not. First off, I did not know that. Um, and second off, I guess from you starting as a sign guy, that's why I still. So, I, I mean, one of my first things at Alamedia early on was you handing me some signs and telling me to go put some <laughs> signs out. So I guess it, that's right. it all started there. Uh, that's where it all goes back to. Yeah. And and also in the parking lot of Sambuca, where I first um, it, it interacted, at least with Mrs. Trimble. The the young lady who would eventually become Mrs. Trimble, I should say. So a lot of history there and a lot of um, – I, I made a lot of deposits not into my bank account but into the Texans for Dan Branch bank account in both <laughs> buildings, the, the tw- to 2100 and 2000 McKinney. So um, I can't believe they ever trusted me with those large amounts uh, campaign donations. But well, It's kind of like a homecoming for you going back down and <laughs> – Chatting with Tech, Texas Capital Bank, Effie was yeah. just so great speaking with us. I've seen her all around town. Everyone knows her, and she is has been really amazing as far as helping with investment in. I would say, I mean, I, I think it's fair to say under underserved communities. And when it comes to underserved, we talk about all the different ways from retail to restaurants. But in order to get a lot of the amenities that people want who live in southern Dallas, it has to be financed. There has to be capital that is, is infused into these areas. And Effie has made the relationships and works with companies to make sure that they are a ready to receive the funds. Uh, they have plans for those. And then she makes sure, and, and her bank, you know, again, and I think it's going to be a big part of our conversation. Her bank is able to identify those opportunities where some other banks, you know, cannot and are not able to, and some don't want to, mm-hmm. uh, but, you know, credit to Texas Capital Bank. And she is, you know, again, I think we've, it's kind of been a theme of some of our guests, but they are very fortunate to have Effie yeah. working with them. She's a neat lady and we are very fortunate to have, uh, you know, had this opportunity to visit with her. So let's get into that when we come back. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Deconstructing Dallas, Ryan Trimble, Sean Williams. Stick with us. Hey everyone, let's cut to the chase. Do you want an afternoon with the best, most affordable family entertainment in town? Do yourself and your family a favor and purchase your 2018 SMU football season tickets for just 99 bucks. That's right, for just $99, you can see some great action at Ford Stadium this fall with games against the University of Houston, Navy, and the dreaded TCU Horned Frogs. So join the herd. Go to smumustangs.com or call 214-SMU-GAME and ask for your very own $99 season tickets today. Again, that's smumustangs.com or 214-SMU-G-A-M-E. We'll see you at the stadium. Pony up. We are back. This is Sean Williams, Brian Trimble, Deconstructing Dallas. We are very fortunate to have with us as a guest today, the Senior Vice President of Community Development and Corporate Responsibility at Texas Capital Bank, Effie Dennison. Effie, we are so thankful that you would come on our show with us. So thanks for your time today. Sure. Thank you. Glad to be here. Um, So I wanted to just jump right in because 
We have talked a lot about community responsibility, corporate partners here in Dallas. And so for Texas Capital Bank, can you talk about your role in community development and community responsibility? Sure. Uh, so what what I do here at the bank is I manage the, uh, the community development efforts for the bank as well as all of our corporate social responsibility. Our mission here is to power prosperity in business and in life. And fundamental to that is having a thriving community. What makes it prosperous is having access to affordable housing, uh, health care, good nutrition, uh, education, all of those things that make for a thriving, bustling community. And what we do here in my department is to manage all of the bank's efforts across all of our markets. Uh, for Texas Capital Bank, that happens to be Texas, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio, and Austin. Those are the major markets that we serve. Uh, and that's just a, a you know, on for us to do that every day to be able to be responsible for that role. And I mean, Texas by itself is big enough (laughs) to have plenty of business just in our state. It is. Yeah. It is. And we we take a strategic approach to that. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because one of the things, uh, if you look at Texas Capital Bank, our model is not a retail model where we have a branch on every corner. Uh, We are more of a corporate bank or business bank to where we are uh, work a lot with small businesses, mid-sized businesses, and we have niche businesses that that has helped us to grow uh, exponentially over time. We're a $26 billion institution, which makes us a midsize or a large bank, depends on how you look at that. Uh, all organic growth. Uh, we have not made any acquisitions, nor do we have any plans to in the near future. Uh, but our strategy has been, where can we, with a bank that has minimal footprint in terms of retail branch operations, be able to provide and go deeper into communities. And one of the ways that we did that was in every one of our markets, we looked at going deeper with a particular market that had the greatest need where we could make strategic investments that would have the greatest impact. In the case of Dallas, that would be West Dallas. Effie, before we uh, brought you on, we were talking off air about how Texas Capital Bank was down here, had their flag planted in Uptown, in the Uptown office, <laughs> and there was, um, you know, Trulux was there and the old caboose, silver caboose diner looking car, and not a lot else down here. So to me, Texas Capital Bank has always been kind of a, a trailblazer. Now looking at Uptown, and I mean, you can't even see uh, around you because there's so many, so many skyscrapers around you now. So talk to us about another part of town, south of I-30, West Dallas. Talk about Texas Capital Bank's uh, what they're doing on the ground in these neighborhoods. Well, I mean, we could start and spend the entire podcast talking about the things that we're doing. I'm just going to focus on the West Dallas community, for instance. Right. Uh, this is a community that was in the shadows of the downtown. Uh, clearly, where we're located in Uptown, you can literally just cross over the Margaret Hunt Bridge. Our investment with in West Dallas began long before Margaret Hunt Bridge was there, before there was even a thriving community that it is today. And we did that because here's a community that's here. We have close proximity. We're at the time the closest bank to that community. And to be able to engage with uh, the Trinity Groves, uh, which happens to be a customer of ours, can you imagine someone coming in and say, listen, I want to build, take this old warehouses and convert it into income better space for small businesses, small restaurants, which is typically the most riskiest business for banks, to come in and have an opportunity to grow their businesses. Imagine that coming across your desk and you're having to say, sounds like a great idea. You talk about innovative and cutting edge. So that's where it began. It's who we are and it's certainly a lot of our clients that we serve, uh, the customers of our bank. They bring to us new and innovative ideas or opportunities to really connect to community in a meaningful way. So to make that investment And to see that investment now be the catalyst to drive all of that economic development that you're seeing now around that area, it was it was just uh, it was a great opportunity to be on the ground floor to see that happen. So, when you talk about investment and you talk about areas that need investment, you talk about people that need investment where it can make a substantial difference. What does that mean? You know, what 
what types of projects, what 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 is the transaction like? What does it mean when a bank like yours makes an investment in a community? Okay, I'm glad you asked for that clarification. So for us, investments could be the physical loans that we make for redevelopment. What does that look like? That looks like housing, multifamily housing. If you go down the uh, Bishop Arts area, for instance, what they call the gateway at the intersection of Davis and uh, Zhang and Beckley, on both sides of the street, you see mixed-use multivalent.